This is my uh, electric bicycle here, sitting in my uh, garage. That's the power wheel there. And uh, there's the throttle control. And it goes back to the uh, uh, system control box here. And this is the uh, battery pack. Um, this is actually the second incarnation of this uh, electric bicycle kit. Originally I built it on a, uh, a beach cruiser, 26 inch beach cruiser. And I had it almost finished and I found that the uh, rear hub was bad. So I had to uh, I pulled the rear wheel off the beach cruiser and found that I couldn't fix the hub. It was missing parts. Uh, so I had to take the whole thing apart. And I had this uh, Roadmaster sitting around. It's a, Roadmaster is a Walmart bicycle. It's not a very high-end bike at all. And uh, Actually I picked it up at the dump pulled into the dump to drop off a load and a guy in a truck came in and he had it sitting in his truck and I was going to toss it. I asked him if I could have it and he said sure but it's pretty rusty. Well it was pretty rusty. But, um, I think with the Roadmasters the biggest deal with them is the graphics. The pretty good graphics on it. I think they, they spent more on the graphics than they did on the rest of it. But. Uh, Anyways, I'm switching. Uh, I picked up a bike that uh, I've got stripped down sitting up here on the bench. And the problem with this electric bike kit is that uh, you have to have a lot of clearance for the forks because it, it's about a five inch uh, width on the uh, hub motor you can see down there. So a lot of bicycle forks won't fit. I also picked up another Roadmaster and uh, it had a set of forks that uh, would work. That's them here. I really had a job getting it off the bike. It was so rusted. Uh, so I'm going to try to mount those onto this uh, uh, giant and uh, get rid of the Springer setup and get rid of the Roadmaster too. Um, problem with the Springer is it throws the, the front wheel way too far forward and it throws off the geometry on the bike. These are some other bikes I have. This is a handmade bicycle. Uh, it has a sterling frame which is handmade. And, uh, it was hand assembled. It's probably from the mid 80's or so. It was in pretty rough shape when I got it. A lot of rust. It still has some rust as you can see, but I've been working on it. It's really a lightweight, nice bike. This bike here is a Centurion Le Mans, a Japanese bike, probably from the early 80s. I haven't tracked down the serial numbers on it. I got it in that handmade bike up at a garage sale. I made five bucks for both of them. They were pretty rough when I got them, but this Centurion. It's built like a Swiss watch. It's really a beautiful machine. High, high components, high quality components. And this here is a Bugatti. Uh, no relation to uh, the famous car maker, but uh, it is Italian. And uh, from the looks of it, it's probably a very early 60s. Uh, probably among some of the first uh, exports from Europe on 10 speeds that they were doing. It has uh, 28 inch wheels. It even has a little bell. <laughs> got a little pouch on the back. It was pretty rusty when I got it. I spent quite a bit of time messing with it. I, I haven't ribbed it much. but It does have fenders which is kind of neat here in the Northwest where it rains so much. This is a Swin Traveler. I picked it up for about 12 bucks at a thrift shop. It was kind of rusty and the 
chain was hanging off of it and that. Uh, it's really a lightweight bike. It's a tall man's bike. You really need to be about 6'2 to ride this thing. I'm 6 foot, but my height is in my back rather than my legs, so when I ride it, I start out, I wobble quite a bit till I get it going. But, uh, it's really fast. I mean, uh, I can't do much with it. I'm too old, but a young guy on it, he could really get it to move, I'm sure. The front wheel on it was uh, so badly warped when I got it that you couldn't ride it. It just banged against the fork, so I stripped it down and straightened it out a bit. It still wobbles. And you can see I haven't got the brake pads on it on the front. I'm going to have to strip it down and relace it again to see if I can't get it straightened out a little more. So. This is probably from the early 80s, too, and as I understand it, it's one of the best road bikes that Schwinn ever built. It's made in Chicago, American made. And then I've got a few more bikes sitting out in the shed that are got an old Shogun back there that I found in a ditch. It's kind of rusted, but uh, I'm kind of picking up some parts to restore it a bit. I've got a lot of wheels over here and tires and more wheels and tires here. This is a this is the rim that's going to go as the rear wheel on the Giant. I got it in the vise. I'm sanding it down. I'm going to paint it. It's the original wheel that was on the back of the uh, uh, Roadmaster. It's kind of cheap metal. And, oh, it's fairly straight. You know, but the way that was when it's built and all that it, even if I knew what I was doing and had the latest equipment I doubt that I could get it true I took the uh, spokes out of it laced it into this aluminum wheel but because the rim is a little different the spokes didn't quite make it you see the standing up there so I gotta pull all that out I'll paint this and put it in here and this will be the rear wheel Okay, I got this uh, frame painted up. I had some old can of aluminum paint sitting around. The paint was still good, so it looks a little better than it did, I guess. I'll have to let it dry for a couple of days and hit that spot down there when I take it out of the vise. Uh, so I guess the next shot is to put the uh, install the forks on the giant. The giant's uh, it's a higher end uh, mountain bike, a lot better than the Roadmaster. It's got the chromoly frame, they call it a lighter frame, and it has a center pull brakes, which are really nice. Uh, this is original forks, and I made a mistake earlier. You don't need five inches of clearance, you need three and three quarters to four inch but it has to extend up to five inches from the axle. Well, this set of forks has the uh, brake assembly and even the lever still on it. It's lighter than this stripped down Roadmaster fork, but it won't fit the uh, tire. I've got the uh, Roadmaster forks installed on the uh, giant mountain bike, as you can see. I used the uh, bearings and races that were originally on the uh, on the uh, Giant rather than the uh, bearings from the Roadmaster. And uh, if I can hold this up, pardon the wiggle in the camera. I don't know if I can get this right or not, but you can see the pitch is about the same between the original giant forks in the uh, Roadmaster, so the geometry won't be messed with too badly. Uh, I do have this appendage uh, sticking up at the top here. The uh, tube on the uh, Roadmaster forks was longer than the original giant. That probably won't look too cool, but it's actually to my advantage because I can raise my handlebars even more. I don't like to uh, lean too much when I'm riding hurts my back. 
I'll probably cover it with some chrome goodies or something. I don't know. The only other problem is, of course, the colors don't match, but uh, I guess I could repaint it later if I wanted to.